in 2016 at Phaleron, just south of Piraeus outside Athens. Archaeologists found 80 skeletons in what appeared to be a rather well-ordered mass burial. They consisted entirely of men and most of them had been shackled. It also appeared that they had been executed on the very spot where they later had been buried. This is a story of the shackled skeletons at Phaleron. And please be advised that this episode contains graphical pictures of skeletons, although they are 2,500 years old. I am your host Morten Eriksson. Welcome to Ancient History. As mentioned, the find consists of about 80 men in an unmarked mass grave. They seem buried in three separate rows in slightly different configurations, perhaps suggesting that the victims had slightly different status in the eyes of their killers. The find also suggests that they originate in the third quarter of the 7th century before Common Era, and many of the skeletons are almost intact. The victims appear to have been free men. The analysis of their teeth points to them being young men, 20 to 30 years old, some even younger. From what we can see, they had, up to the point of their death, lived on a well-balanced diet. Taken together, this suggests that they were victims of a political struggle or war. It is not possible to fully rule out that they were runaway slaves or some sort of criminals, but the number of victims speak against at least the last notion. The large part of them seem to have been killed by a blow to the head and several skulls have crushed temples, jaws or other fractures. Most of them were buried laying on their back with their hands over their heads tied in shackles or chains. Some, however, were found lying face down and a few on their side. The intact state of the skeletons suggest that their graves were filled shortly after the execution and then managed to remain undisturbed for more than 2,500 years. Not all victims had been bound by iron but instead had had their hands tied together with ropes. We know this because the graves lack iron deposits, but the hands are still in bound position, suggesting an organic material that since long has withered away. Worth noticing is that the mass grave was dug in what appears to be an ordinary graveyard. There are several finds of nonviolent deaths in the immediate vicinity. Remains of children and infants buried in urns are also found at the site, often just next to the victims. In its entirety, the burial site has been the resting place for about 1500 humans, including our 80 victims. The DNA test that has been made have unfortunately come up without any results. Although scientists were able to pull actual DNA from the skeletons, that DNA were in later laboratory tests concluded to be in too poor condition to be usable, and therefore a conclusive identification is still missing. Most of the skeletons seem to have been put very carefully in place and can be sorted into three main groups. Row 1 consists of 47 bodies in total, with 40 men in one row, mostly tied at their wrists, others with their hands behind their backs without iron traces. In row 2, we find 16 skeletons, also with the arms behind their backs, with no metal traces, suggesting that they were bound with rope. The 16 skeletons at row 3 seem to be buried in a simple pit. These men had their hands bound with iron shackles. It appears they were executed at sight and then thrown in the grave. Notable is that the victims seem to have received rights before their passage to the underworld. Libation vessels, or nokai, for liquid offering, has been found next to the victims. These vessels date to the later part of the 7th century BCE, making any kind of dating possible. A few other finds also give a hint of this being a wartime burials. In one skeleton, a small arrowhead was found, perhaps a remnant of earlier fighting. And one skeleton seemed to have been buried with a small knife in his boots, 
apparently not found by his assailants at the time. If we look beyond the pure analytical approach on all this, the agony and the fear of all those young men shackled together, soon meeting their end of their life, and the sheer brutality of the perpetrators murdering 80 young humans by hand, crushing their skulls and their bodies with stones. This is not a very pleasant picture. Having established what they were, young men victims of a mass execution, the intriguing questions of who they were is still open for debate. And of course, already early on, there were suggestions to who these men were and what had happened to them. The unearthed pottery can be dated to somewhere between 650 and 625 BCE. This places them right at the point where the Athenian democracy would soon evolve from political conflicts and turmoil. These were the ages where aristocratic families had gained power after the fall of the kings of the Greek Dark Ages. And so it turns out that the executed men might have been participants in what would be one of the key moments in Athenian history. The suggestion has been put forward that these young men were killed in the aftermath of the putsch attempt by the Athenian Olympic champion Chilon. But who then was Chilon and what had happened? Chilon is the first recorded Athenian to have been a winner at the Olympic Games. He had won the Dialus, a foot race for about 400 meters, around the year 640 BCE. As it happens, he is also the man connected to the first datable episode in Athenian political history. Not much more than that is known about Chilon, except some smaller details. He was of noble birth, and his father-in-law, Theagenes, was the tyrant in Megara, on the Isthmus of Corinth, not far from Athens. Exactly what led up to the coup attempt is unclear, but we know that he had asked the oracle at Delphi for advice, and that he was backed by Theagenes. The oracle had told him to seize Athens in 632, during that year's Olympic Games, since the vigilance of the city's citizens would be lower, due to the Games and its festivals. And so he collected a following and set his attempt in motion. These plans were probably not easy to contain, and one can imagine the feel in the city streets leading up to the coup, buzzing with rumors and tension. Something was about to happen. But it turned out that the citizens would have nothing of it, and they soon managed to repel the putsch and the coup makers were soon defeated. This forced Chilon and his brother and the other followers to seek refuge on top of the Acropolis in the Athena temple that stood there at the time. It should be said that this temple would later be burnt by the Persians, it's not the temple that we see today. After a time, Chilon and his closest aides managed to escape. The abandoned followers, on the other hand, were soon surrounded by the Athenian forces. According to both Plutarchus and Thucydides, they were persuaded to leave the temple area, lives spared and stand trial. Enter history. Archon at this time was Megacles of the Alcmaeonides. He now broke the agreement, and after the trial had the followers of Chilon executed. In doing so, he broke a sacred law not to kill suppliants. Soon after breaking this oath in the name of the city itself, Megacles was exiled from Athens. What was worse is that his genos, the Alcmaeonidae, became cursed or tainted by miasma, a taint that would be inherited by generations and come to play a significant role in later Athenian and Greek history. The same curse was also cast upon the other archons and their families at the time. Later it would be known as the Calonian Curse, but that is a story for another episode. Much of the information in this episode comes from the excavations made by the Swedish Institute in Athens. If you want to read more about it, I have put a link to the detailed excavation report in the description to the video. 
There is today still no way of knowing if the bodies in the mass graves at Phaleron are the victims of Chilon's grab for tyranny in Athens. It is, however, a distinct possibility. Later mentions claim that the victims were mainly stoned to death. This would fit the crushed skulls. Although, if by stone or not, is not possible to say. And it is an unmistakable fact that many of the victims were put through a gruesome torture and later stabbed or cut to death. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. And if you enjoy my videos about the ancient world and would like to support me to make even better ones in the future, please consider joining me at Patreon. I've put the link to my Patreon site in the description to the video.